Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are we all doing? I hope you're enjoying yourselves here. I'm an engineer, and so we're not going to be talking about the early universe, we're going to be talking about light bulbs. Okay? Very exciting stuff here, all right? So I'm a professor over in electronic electrical engineering, and I'm also co-founder of a company called Equilum. And what we actually do is we produce masks that provide light therapy to horses, and if I've got a little bit of time at the end, I'll talk about that. We also have a display up here on one of the tables. And what I want to show you, I've got a sort of a thesis I'm going to throw at you, the fact that light does a lot more than let us see. It has very, very major effects on our bodies, and the fact that, in fact, it regulates our lives right down to the cellular level. Can everybody hear me? Is that okay? Yes. The old fellas in the back row can hear me, yeah? <laughs> good, good. As long as the old fellas can hear me, we're grand. Now, so light's very important. Question, have we been damaging ourselves and our environment with the wrong sorts of lighting? And the answer I'm going to say is yes. And I'm going to examine how light affects us, and hopefully I'm going to prove this thesis, and then I'm going to show how you can use light to do a lot of different things, and why something has changed in our lives, and the things that are going to affect us. So a man called Michael Schiffer, he went and he spent two months in 1962 in a cave in a hole in the ground. He didn't see any sunlight, and he had no clocks. He was completely cut off. And in emerging, he found he was 25 days behind. So some of his days actually lasted, or he perceived them as over 48 hours. He was also depressed and disoriented. I hope there are no French people here. I was going to crack a joke about how did they tell the difference. But basically, he, it wasn't good for him. And they actually used this type of experiment now for training astronauts. So there's a cave in Sardinia, and all the European astronauts are sent off there to do some training. And what he essentially proved was that there was this thing called the body clock, and it led to chronobiology, the study of the effects, if you'd like, of the clock within people. Every one of us has this. In fact, every cell in our body has a clock, effectively. And within our brains, there's a set of cells, and these are the master clock. And that master clock has to be reset every day. And if it isn't reset properly, you've got problems. Now, the question is, how is it reset? Well, there are a set of cells in your eye called ganglion cells. They're not, they've got nothing to do with imaging. Blind people, have, blind people have the same cells, and they're particularly sensitive to blue light. If you disrupt the system, if you disrupt the body clock, and I'm going to show you some places that we probably all have gone away and messed up our own body clocks, it's got serious consequences for our health. Okay, so light's important, not just for imaging, but why are we excited about this now? What's happened? Well, we've got a new type of light, and it's like a transistor. It's called light-emitting diodes, and red and green ones have been around for some time, but last year a man got a Nobel Prize for inventing the blue LED, and the reason is if you stick red, green, and blue together, you've got white light like the lighting in this room, the lighting we use in our houses and our offices. So there's probably going to be a lot of money involved in this. In fact, there are EU directives saying that we've got to replace all our old lights with LED lights. And we can choose the amount of green, red, and blue we have in our lights. So with light bulbs. Will these new light bulbs make a big difference? Okay, well, first of all, if we would replace all the street lighting in the world, we could decrease electricity consumption by 40%. I've got that out of a UN report. LEDs last longer. You put them in, you don't have to replace them so much. Less maintenance. Contain no toxic mercury. In 9-11, when the Twin Towers came down, there were one million fluorescent bulbs broke. And a lot of the people who worked on those sites actually now suffer from heavy metal poisoning, which is incredibly, incredibly horrible. Los Angeles reports a decrease in street crime under LED lighting. Two examples. Fluorescent and LED. 70% of people who were asked prefer the LED. What do you think? It tends to be subjective. People see things a little bit differently. They're looking for different things. But most people quite like the LED lighting. Okay, a new type of light bulb. Hooray! We're all excited. May reduce energy loss. Okay, a bit boring. May make seeps a bit safer. Okay, that's a bit more interesting. But how else is it going to change the way I live? Me. What's it going to do to me? Well, I always think the best way to see what something is going to happen or what effect it will have is to go back and see the last time it changed. So what happened the last time we changed the lights? And now we're going to go around a big corner. What happened was quantum mechanics. Very clever man, Thomas Edison. He was very clever because he spent a lot of time, worked hard, made lots of inventions, but he was also very clever because he patented what he made. And we're talking about a high, high-tech industry here with lots of money. People wanted electricity in their houses, not because of electric cookers. There were no electric cookers. There was no air conditioning. They wanted electric light bulbs because they're safer, they're cleaner, they're easier to use. So lots of money. The Germans did not want to pay Edison. No bloody way. They wanted to make a better light bulb. To make a better light bulb, you've got to understand how a light bulb works. So they got a very clever fellow called Max Planck, and he was working on how do light bulbs work. 
So we know if we get a piece of metal, we heat it up. It turns red hot, and then if we heat it up more, it turns white hot. And that essentially is how a light bulb, an old tungsten filament light bulb works. We heat it up. But they couldn't explain how that worked. All the theories did not explain how it worked, and Planck came along and said, well, suppose we break the light up into pieces called quanta, called photons. All of a sudden, it could get it to work. Now, he didn't actually believe that this was true. It took Einstein to come along and take Planck's idea and apply it to another effect called the photoelectric effect, for which he won the Nobel Prize. He didn't win it for relativity. He won it for basically using the idea of how light bulbs works to explain the physical world. And in fact, quantum mechanics is the way they design and they make these LEDs and transistors in all our computers. So the last time we changed the lights, we basically came up with quantum mechanics. There were other changes. Electricity in people's houses. Cleaner, safer light. They didn't have gas explosions. Longer days, people could party or they could study in the evenings. Completely changed the way we live. The poor old candle makers and the gas lamp lighters and the whale oil manufacturers, they all went out of business. But most people thought it was a really great idea. So what are going to be the effects of LEDs? Honest to God, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you a few of the things which I think will happen, a few of the things which are happening, but 10 years from now, probably a lot of predictions I would make would be wrong. But we're certainly going to have the end of the age of static lighting. You walk into a room, you switch on the light, and that's the light you're stuck with for the rest of the day. That's gone. That's going to end. We're going to have biologically optimized light, and I'll talk a little bit about this. We're not talking about dimmers. We're talking about the lighting in a room changing during the day, perhaps changing during the year. You could wake up every morning, ladies, to the light in the room on the day after your honeymoon. Or the, you could say, I want to have 12 o'clock on Monday, the 4th of July in Barbados, and that'll be the lighting you'll have. Applications, sales, education, medicine, suicide prevention, mining and farming. I'm gonna start off with sales. Now, are there any men, any men or boys in this room? I think there are. Can we all say, ugh? I want all the boys to say, ugh, please, ugh. If you ever doubt the power of color or lighting to affect and influence customers, walk into the toy section, the girls' toy section in any toy store. Don't loiter, gentlemen, but just walk in. And there will be an assault on your visual senses. There's a little quote here from The Economist. Barbie has outlasted all toys that were invented in the same period pretty much. And part of the reason I think is because of the color. It satisfies some need in the customer. So color and lighting are important to sales. Go into your supermarket and look at the way they illuminate their vegetables. Education, the artificial blue sky. So again, all this stuff here is based on studies that people have done. Some of these studies have been done in UCD. Blue light wakes you up. They've done studies on students in classrooms which have got specially blue light, blue sky light. They read faster, they have better concentration, make fewer errors, and they're calmer. Ladies and gentlemen, calmer teenagers. Think about that for a second. Now, there's a downside. I, I don't know if you all remember neighbors, but they were always studying on the beach. Yeah. OK, so all your kids are going to be studying on the beach from now on. Too much blue light can cause damage. This is highly energetic photons, which means you've got to optimize it. You just don't put one color in. You change the lighting during the day. Also, under LED lighting, there's less flicker. And this can be very important for students with autism, less nausea and fewer headaches. So there are biological, measured biological effects. Light hygiene. If you look at a computer screen in the evenings before you go to bed, it is the same thing as drinking cups of coffee. Okay? You can actually buy computer programs which change the color spectrum from your computer screen. So, and this is an advertisement for IKEA. They're selling yellow lamps, which are much more cozy and will help you relax. And this is actually based on science. So there are profits to be made out of this, ladies and gentlemen. A great deal of profits. Medicine. First of all, chronotherapy. Depending on when you take a medicine, it has different effects on you. And you can pick a particular time according to your body clock to take a medicine so that the medicine is most efficacious. It works better. And you can light a room in such a way that you can bring people's body clocks to a particular time in their cycle. And one study that's been done is on rheumatoid arthritis where it's very, very important. It turns out to be very important to take your medicine at the right time. So for the young people, this means nothing. But for the old ones, including myself, it means a lot. Light therapy. For years and years, there's been a thing called Billy Lights. Babies born with jaundice. I love this little picture, because if you look very close, you can see the baby's wearing a little mask to cover its eyes. 
and they put the baby under a blue light, and the blue light basically helps cure it of jaundice. What you can do with LEDs is you can find the exact wavelength, the exact color that provides the best performance, and then you use that, that performance. I've got to speed up now, so I won't talk too much about the wrinkles and the acne and the eczema. I've been told it's a young lady who's told me I can't, so take it up with her. I've got a few more slides. I think I'll keep going, yeah? Um, so photodynamic therapy, you take a drug. The drug goes to the parts of your body which have cancer in them, and then you illuminate the person. The person goes into a dark room until the drug takes hold. Then you bring them out. You shine a very intense light on them, activates the drugs, and kills the cancer. Again, this is works. Matter of life and death. They put blue LEDs into the subways in Tokyo and onto a large bridge in Korea, and they claim that the suicide rates in the sites decreased by 80 and 70%. They've also put blue lights into the stations in, in Gatwick Airport. Now, a lot more work needs to be done, but there does seem to be very strong anecdotal evidence that this is important. Mining, if you've got the right type of lights on a miner's hat, he doesn't cause accidents. And they've proven that. There are farms in Ireland, ladies and gentlemen, in which they have specially prepared lights to improve the growth of plants and to grow exotic plants in the winter. So you grow things closer to the market. I had a caption on this figure which says, which is the horse's ass? <laughs> this is the light therapy mask we're selling in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, America, England, South Africa. They're paying us money. God bless their sense. Instead of putting the horse, you want the horse to come into foal a particular time of the year so that the foals are strong and big for the yearling races. Nowadays, they put them in a stable, they switch the lights on and off, trick the horse into thinking it's springtime. You've got to clean out the stables. If there's an illness, all the horses get the illness. The horses prefer to be outside. So the horse wears this mask. It can run around in the field. The mask goes on for three months. There's a battery that lasts three months. And at the end of the day, the horse is happier, the manager is happier, and the foals are bigger and stronger and healthier. We've got an exhibit, as I said, up on the table up above, and that's our website. I better stop now before I get in trouble. <laughs>